I forgot to get my TikTok live set up. Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. We're getting ready to paint something we haven't done before, which is a um, multi-level 3D door hanger. So this is not your typical 3D door hanger. It actually has two levels to it. So um, this one is really cool. And I'm getting my TikTok live set up because I forgot to do that before I went live with you guys. I usually go live on two different devices at the same time. So I'm going to get that going. And we're also going to be doing a wood grain look on the background of this, which is going to be super cool. Um, I've never tried this wood grain tool before, but all the videos that I've seen on TikTok make this look so easy. What did I just do? It's showing some kind of weird effect on TikTok. TikTok's lost its mind. Stop it. Voice effects, sound effects, no. Effects, yes. Turn off that. It's making it look like Christmas lights or something crazy. <laughs> TikTok moves around the button to mirror your video. Every time I get on here, it's in a different spot. All right, there we go. TikTok can see now. Um, good, good, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of day it is at your place. Um, I'm glad you're here. Um, if you didn't get a text letting you know I was going live, you can get text alerts by texting um, alert to the number that's on the screen. Thank y'all for being here. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, Pat and Kathy. Good morning, Una. Hello, Kayla and Linda. Like I said, we're going to be using a wood grain tool. How many of you guys have one of these? Are you like me? Did you buy it and then uh, never use it? <laughs> <laughs> I think I've had this thing for like two years and it's been in the cabinet and it's pristine. It's never been used. So we're going to put it to use today because, you know, um, why not try something for the first time with 100 people watching? Hi, Lucretia. And this design that we're going to be painting is a file that I got for free from Creative Fabrica. So um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Creative Fabrica. But it is a website where they have fonts you can download, graphics, clip art, SVG files for your Cricut or your laser cutting machine. That's what I cut this one on. Um, Cynthia said, I didn't even know there was a tool like that. Where can I find one? It's in my Amazon favorites, I do believe. Um, but I'm going to show you how to use it. It's not nearly as scary looking as, um, as it looks like to look at it. I've watched several TikTok videos and all they do is like pull it and kind of give it this little rocking motion to make like the little knots in the wood. So we're going to try this. Teresa says, I've used it for cake decorating. Really? Really? I didn't know you could do that on cake decorating. I uh, use it on cake decorating. Uh, let me take this off the screen. And okay, so the file for this is not one you can buy in our shop. You'll have to go and download it on Creative Fabrica's website. Let me explain real quick, quick what Creative Fabrica is. It is a website where you can download fonts, clip art, SVG files, all the things, and you can buy them one by one if you like, but they actually have a membership where you can pay $5 a month or $60 for the entire year. Um, actually, I think it's $9 a month, but if you pay annually, it averages out to $4.99 a month, which is $60 for the entire year, and you get access to thousands upon thousands of fonts and things that you can download. So that's how you can get this file um, as being a part of the Creative Fabrica program. But if you want to just try it, there is actually a link up in my video description that takes you over and you can click to do a trial period and you can download 10 things for free. It can be fonts, it can be um, clip art, or it can be files like these to use um, on your uh, laser cutting machine. And they also come with PDFs. I'm not sure how the PDFs are sized. I've not tried those. So if you don't have a laser machine, go try one of these and report back to me and let me know how the PDF works, if it prints out, um, at what size it prints out and stuff like that. And I think you might even be able to take the image of that and blow it up on block posters if you need a larger size and all the things. Um, but they also allow you to take what you get on there, like a file like this, and sell what you create from it with a commercial license. So I can sell the wood blanks to this. So we did add the wood blank for this project to our shop, and you can get the entire thing. It's not a laser etched blank. Like you can see, it's just a regular wood round, and you're going to get the 3D pieces for $32. So it comes with the 18-inch round and all the little pieces. See how when I remove this here, there's nothing behind it. And so you can position this however you like on the round if you wanna play with it. I kind of recommend like lay it on here and figure out your arrangement first and then kind of, then just get started painting. So that's what we're gonna do. 
Okay, you've used the tool on fondant and then you airbrushed it to look like wood. Teresa, that sounds really cool. I have zero cake decorating, cookie decorating skills. So I'm always impressed by people that can do that. All right, I wanna start just by base coating the wood background of this because one thing you can do is you can use this wood grain tool um, by just putting one coat on here and scraping it through. But I was afraid that the background color was too light. So I'm actually going to darken it up a little bit before I do the wood grain tool. So I'm just going to set all these little flowers over to the side somewhere. <laughs> let, me, let me set them up over here so I don't bump them. It says, hello, summer. So I've got all our little pieces here. And I'm just going to start by base coating it with sable. I'm going to blend these two colors together. So because this is the color, this dark chocolate color, we're going to do on top with the wood grain. So I'm going to blend these two colors together to make a background because this is almost the same color as the wood. And this is almost too close to this color. So I didn't have a color in between. So we're going to blend them. And I'm going to be using a sponge to paint this. It's going to save us a little bit of time. I'm just going to quickly just squirt both colors on here. This is uh, sable brown and fawn is the colors that I'm using for the background. We're just going to cover the entire thing. And this is a car wash sponge from the Dollar Tree that I have cut up into big chunks. It's great for quickly painting a background because it just covers so quickly. I just wanted to darken up the background just a little before we do our wood grain. There we go. Doesn't have to be perfectly covered. Just get it covered because once we put that wood grain on, it's going to cover all that up anyway. Let me get a baby wipe because I just made a mess. <laughs> hey, Sheila. How are you? Good morning, Miss Pam. Hi, Tara. Hello, Gail and Teresa. Uh, hi, Madison on TikTok. TikTok, don't be shy. Say hello. <laughs> Drop a comment. Let me know who's watching. So we've base coated this and I'm just going to um, set this to the side to let it dry. Let me actually scoot this up that way. I've got more table space. <laughs> and then while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to base coat my daisies with white. And I could actually use a sponge for this too, but yeah, let me grab a sponge. Hold up. I've got more of them over here somewhere. Well, I said I did. Where did I put them? Oh, it's on the table. Being organized only works to a point if you put things back <laughs> where they go. Everything has a place. All right, so I'm just going to use my little car wash sponge and give these daisies a coat. Let me distribute it a little better before I start smearing it out or I don't want it to go all over the edges. Hello, April. Amy says, I'm sneaking a watch from school. We're still under ransom attack, so no technology for the computer class. Oh, wow. Wow. I've never heard of a ransom attack. Is that where they hold your internet information hostage or something? Yeah, you don't want to. Don't I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> you, don't, you don't ever want to have to learn. <laughs> I don't know. I don't ever want to have to learn what that is. Uh, the reason I'm using a sponge instead of a brush for this is because I need to put this on in a thin coat. And instead of squirting it directly on there, I think I'm making a bigger mess doing that. Let's put some on this little palette here and pick it up with our sponge. The reason I'm not using a brush is because with piece, when you're doing 3D pieces and you're using a brush, a lot of times it can be hard to distribute a nice thin coat without getting it all over the edges of your pieces. And I kind of made a little bit of a mistake right there and got too much and it kind of went down in between the, the cutouts, but that's all right. I'm just going to keep going and do a nice thin coat. We'll probably have to do more than one coat. Just get it good and covered and smooth it out as best you can. Just like that. So we're going to set that to the side and do the next one. Oh, Amy says they asked for $9 million and the FBI refused to pay it. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Good morning, Patty. You love sunflowers? Well, this one's not sunflowers, it's daisies. But I suppose you could paint them like sunflowers if you wanted to. Let me show you what the finished product is supposed to look like. So this is actually the picture that they have on Creative Fabrica. So it gives you an idea of how you could paint it. 
Um, and so if you're not using, if you're using um, revolution plywood or some kind of wood that already has a wood grain in it, you could literally just stain the background and you wouldn't have to use this wood grain tool that we're going to use. But because I'm painting on MDF, it doesn't have a wood grain. So I've got to, I have a hard time holding that still. So I've got to um, put a wood grain on it. All right. So that's coat number one on our flowers. Let's dry them. Oh, I forgot about this little lone flower over here. There's one little flower who's not connected to the rest. There we go. Now let's dry them. Does anybody have any questions about Creative Fabrica or how to get this file or things like that? Like I was explaining in the beginning, the file is from Creative Fabrica. You can go on there and create a trial um, account and download this file for free. So I've got two links for you up in the description. One is for the file and one is to activate the trial. Um, and if you really like it, you can download up to 10 things for free. And then once you hit your 11th, it'll start charging you $9 a month, or you can choose annually and annually is only $60 a year or $5 a month. Um, and it'll either do that on your 11th download or after one month. So just keep that in mind. Sheila, the thunder that I have is a Nova 24. I also have a really large thunder, but they don't even sell that one anymore. <laughs> it holds an entire four foot by eight foot sheet. Lynn, yeah, you can go ahead and paint the earrings that you got. You can paint those anytime you want. Hey, Michelle, PC sisters. <laughs> Patty says, the, you said daisies. Those were my mom's favorite. You're still going to make it. If you don't want to mess with getting the file from Creative Fabric or if you just, or if you don't have a laser machine and you want to get um, the wood blank for this one, we are selling the 3D pieces and the wood round. Um, for $32, and I did put the link for that also up in the video description. All right, let's do our second coat on our daisies. Just dabbing it on with our sponge. Whoops, throwing daisies in the floor. It's all right, I'll get it in a second. It's down below my feet. <laughs> One, two, three. I did, it's down here by the trash can. I can get it. There we go. Okay, we're going to let those dry and do the other set of daisies. You're thinking about getting the 51 with the pass through. Um, Sheila, it depends on how big of an area you have to store it in. I feel like my little Nova 24 is not quite as big as I wanted it to be. So I wish I would have gone with a larger one. Um, because the pass through is not difficult to do, but it is, um, it is just another step when you're cutting out something large. So it can be kind of annoying that you have to take that extra step or whatever. And so if you're able to get the next size up or even the 51, that would be excellent. Because we're putting this on so thin, we sometimes have to do two or even three coats of white. They go on so quick. It's not really that obnoxious to do multiple coats. And if you just have those little craft sponge uh, brushes, you could use those as well. I don't actually have any of those. And so I'm just using a car wash sponge. I do advise that whatever sponge you use, make sure it's a really dense foam instead of the really porous foam of like a kitchen sponge. Sometimes those kitchen sponges have really lots of holes in them. Stephanie says, we bought a ticket to SA Live. How do we get into the Facebook group? Uh, Stephanie, you should have received an email if you bought your ticket, but if you can't find it, um, you can either search here on Facebook, type in SA Live Destin, and then, you know, look for groups that have that name, or you can just email our customer service and they can point you in the right direction as well. <laughs> April said, I was wondering why they, or Lynn said, I was wondering why they weren't put together and then thought it's because you're supposed to paint them. Yeah, it's easier to paint them first and then glue them all down. So when you get your 3D pieces, do, paint, do all the painting first before you do any of your gluing. Okay. What'd you say? Can you get your stick tied up? Uh, I do, but it's over there on the table oh, in okay. one of those little bags. I don't know if I left it in the bag. Here. That's it. Okay. 
I got a new a new glue that we're going to use. Actually, no, it's the new one. The um, do you see the plastic baggie over there? Hold on, guys. I told you I'm disorganized. It's this one. I got it at Namta Creativation, and I really like it. So we're going to be using this glue today. And let me dry these to make sure we got good coat. <laughs> yeah, that's Charlie's leftover pop tart from where she was crafting in here. Aaliyah just held up a bowl with a half-eaten pop tart. That's Charlie. Leaving snacks in the craft room. See you later, Lynn. Hello, Jolene. If you haven't bought a ticket to Southern Adornments Live yet, we do still have some available. You can get them at southernadornmentslive.com and come join us September 29th and 30th. 30th in Destin, Florida. We're going to paint and craft for two days and hang out on the beach. Tara says, if I order a blank that has a design, like the sunflower with the letter in the middle, how big is it? Tara, you get to pick what size you're ordering. So you can get that um, in 6, 8, 12, or 20 inch right now. We are going to be adjusting our sizes in um, May. All of our, our largest size in May, um, we're going down to an 18 inch. It's just easier to cut those sizes and ship them and a lot more affordable for you guys um, for shipping. And so now that we're offering flat rate shipping, I think it'll just allow us to be able to keep that flat rate shipping nice and low. So the largest will be 18 inches starting in May, but for right now you can get it as large as 20 inches. So it just depends on the size that you're wanting. All right, these look pretty good, but I'm giving them just one more. I don't even know what coat we're on. Is this number three? Was anybody paying attention? I think it's three. <laughs> Tara, Tara wants to know how fast your shipping is. Um, so I feel like lately we've kind of been speeding up our shipping, and some of them are going out same day, depending on what you're buying. If you're buying like a wood round um, and, and stuff like that, we have some of those already cut out, and some of those have been shipping same day. Now, if you order several pieces that are different designs and different sizes, um, sometimes that's three, maybe even four days, depending if it's like close to the weekend when you order. But, um, usually within three to four days of your order, your order goes out. All right. Last coat on this little daisy here. Let's set that to the side. Okay. And then while we're waiting for that to dry, that's almost dry over there. Let's go ahead and paint our little centers of our flowers yellow. Lots of little pieces to this door hanger. Are you using your frog hat? Yep. Okay. So here's a hack. If you're painting lots of little bitty things like this, pull off some frog tape or painter's tape or whatever and lay it down, up, like sticky side up, and then get another piece Actually, I'm going to do two strips like this. Sticky side up. It's hard to lay it down without <laughs> picking it back up. And then we're going to tape it down to the table with another piece. So that way we can stick the pieces to the frog tape and they won't shift around while we're trying to paint them. And we won't get as much paint on our hands that way. So tape it down. I did not tape that straight. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to adjust this because it's driving me crazy that it's half hanging off the table here. So these pieces are taped down and these pieces are sticky side up. So now we can take our little wood pieces and do like this and stick them to the tape. And they'll be so much easier to paint because they won't be wiggling all over the place. Let me adjust this also. I didn't tape it very tight. Look how handy dandy that is. So now they're not going to wiggle all over the place while we paint them. All right, we're going to use primary yellow because the centers of our flowers, <laughs> Charlotte says that's so smart. I always get covered in paint. <laughs> we're going to use primary yellow and instead of washing my sponge out, I'm just going to use the other end because I didn't even get any paint on that. And we're just going to start covering them with the yellow. Nice thin coats. And when you dip in your paint, kind of dab and kind of get the excess off. That way you're not just putting a ton of paint on at one time. You're getting nice thin coats. 
This would be a really great starter door hanger for somebody who's intimidated by a door hanger that has lots of detail because this one you're literally just painting a bunch of pieces and gluing them together. So there's not a lot of like painting expertise involved. Where did I get my earrings? Oh, these were given to me by my sister-in-law, Whitney. They're little roller skates. Aren't they fun? I don't know where they came from. Sorry. Anybody have any questions? You said you were going to show us what it looked like uh, when it's done. Oh, I did show that over here on Facebook, but I can't show it on TikTok for some reason. Um, but on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, either one, I popped the picture up on the screen. And so um, I can't do that on TikTok, unfortunately. Okay, coat number two on our yellow. This will probably take at least three coats because I want them nice and bright. The little heat gun that I'm using kind of makes it really quick to do multiple coats, especially too when the paint is so thin like this because it dries super quick. And so you just hit it with the heat gun in between coats and keep going. <laughs> Sheila said you sound rushed. That's probably because I took um, a supplement this morning that gives you energy. Yeah. And so I feel like I've drank a Red Bull this morning. <laughs> I don't mean to rush through it. I'm sorry. How much is that one to purchase? Lori, if you want to get the wood blank for this one, it's $32 on our side. It comes with an 18 inch round and all the little pieces that you're going to need. <laughs> Aliyah says do a happy mail and breathe. Um, so let's do a happy mail comment and tell me. <laughs> Somebody said, what is that supplement? Oh, it's Ollie, Ollie vitamins. And it's the one that curbs your, curbs your cravings. Um, and I don't know, it's got like, goji berry or something <laughs> that gives you energy. All right, let's do a happy mail. Drop me a comment right now and tell me what your favorite summer flower is. And while you're doing that, I'm going to run and get my drink. I'll be right back. That's okay. I don't mind running. <laughs> also wasn't quite sure where I left my cup, so <laughs> rather than send you on a scavenger hunt for it, I thought I'd go grab it. Okay, daisies, zinnias, hydrangeas, roses, Gerber daisies, petunias. What's your favorite flower? If you're just now logging on, drop your favorite summer flower in the comments. And I'm going to try to slow down and breathe sunflowers, camellias. I don't even know if I know what a camellia looks like, but I'm not Camellia. Like, camellia? camellia? I said it wrong. But um, Aaliyah over here is the plant expert amongst the two of us. Peonies. Oh, that's probably my pick too, Miranda. Peonies. I've always loved those. Or peonies. Depends on what part of the country you're in and how you say it. A Freddie Mercury Rose. I've never heard of such. Tiger Lilies. I do like those too. Gardenias. <laughs> tulips. I love the tulips too. I really love March flowers, but those are technically a spring flower, I guess. Black eyed Susans, buttercups, peonies. My mom always had really light pink peonies in her um, landscaping. Okay, if you haven't dropped your comment, do it quick. We're fixing to pick a winner. How do you say that one, Norma? Rabucus. Uh, happy mail winner is Laura Davis. Congratulations, Laura. We'll send you something in the mail. Just give us your address. <laughs> okay, we're going to do another coat of yellow. Ranunculus. 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 Rud none. Rud none. Kill us. Kill us. <laughs> I thought about buying some plants, like some flowers or something. And I sometimes I put some on the porch, but I'm like, man, they're just gonna die. I'm so I'm so horrible about not remembering to water them. And then when it gets and I do pretty good till it gets really hot outside. And then I'm like, mm, I don't keep up with it very well. 
<clears throat> okay, looking at our photo, it looks like the lettering is two different colors. So we've got the word hello, which is kind of a lighter yellow. And then we have the word summer, which is the same color as the center of our flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and pluck these off of here and keep our tape because we're going to use the tape. Let me just set these over to the side because we're not going to use these again until the very, very end. It's kind of satisfying peeling these off of here. Okay, once you get them all off, then lay your word summer on there next because it's going to be the same color. I really probably should have done this with the daisies that I was fumbling around with. And then we're going to paint it yellow also. I'm trying to be real delicate with it because it's so skinny that you definitely have to be careful or you will get it all in between the letters and you don't want it in between the letters. You just want it on the top surface. Roxy wants to know if she can find just the cutouts. Yeah, so if you want to get the cutouts for these, um, they're at shopdoorhangers.com. I put the direct link in the video description. Um, if you're on TikTok and you're watching, head over to shopdoorhangers.com on my pro TikTok profile and just search up 3D Hello Summer and it'll probably pop up. Um, but it's $32. It comes with the 18 inch wood rounds and all the little. Uh, the 18 inch wood round and all the pieces that you're going to need to complete this project. And again, if you want to grab the file for this one, go get it on Creative Fabrica. Sign up for their free trial using the link that I put up there and um, you can get it for free. And if you really love it, you can keep the subscription for just $60 a year and get as many free fonts or SVG files as you like. So it's really a great deal. I'm all the time looking for a cute new font to use. And so I think I'm really going to be taking advantage of this. <clears throat> Not to mention, they've really gotten good about adding a lot of new 3D um, SVG designs and stuff like that, like Christmas ornaments even. And so um, I want to play around with some of those, too. So Patty said, I'm just coming in. Did the elements come on the board or off? What do you think she means? They, they come on. Oh, the they come on the wood round. But we so in the beginning of the video, we showed how they layer on the board. And then we're painting all the pieces individually. And then we're going to stack them and glue them onto the wood after we do our wood grain. <laughs> Donna said I may have to buy this one I don't want to cut all that out I bet you could cut this out like on a scroll saw even if you don't have a laser machine but it would be super tedious you'd have to have a ton of fine motor skills and patience okay at this point I'm just going to start dabbing 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 on here get it covered as best I can because I think we've pretty much got it okay Take this off. Be real gentle with it because it is breakable. It's very delicate. Set it to the side and then we're going to do the word hello. And this will be in a, um, wait, do you think the letter goes this way? Let me look at the picture. <laughs> I'm like, which direction does the serif go on the letter L? Okay, it goes to the left. So I originally had it laying on there backwards. It goes like this. And then we're going to use a lighter yellow and I was going to get another color but to be honest we've got both colors here let's just do this that's kind of pretty it actually looks a little ombre on accident let's do that on purpose it's like a happy accident so I kind of dipped like this corner in white and this corner in yellow and dab 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 till they blended and then scraped horizontally look at that that's a happy accident if I ever saw one. I did not mean to do that, but I really like it. So it's like almost white at the top and then really yellow at the bottom. Bob would be proud. 
Dixie says, I'm an SVG and font junkie. Thousands and thousands worth. I've had a creative fab subscription for years to go with Cricut. You will not be this disappointed. Okay, Dixie, tell us more. What what do you love about Creative Fabrica? Because I'm kind of new to Creative Fabrica, but I'm loving like the ability to just go in and download a font whenever I want or to download a new SVG file. So what do you what do you use it most for? I guess is what I'm asking. Brandy says, I love the accidental blending. Here's what it looks like on my sponge. And I'm going to do another coat. So we're just going to go left to right here. And just keep blending it on there. It looks really cool. Totally an accident. Letitia says, we use that technique for face painting. We double load the sponge. I've seen people do that. I've never thought to do it on a door hanger. I'll be doing this more often now, though. <laughs> is that double-sided tape? No, Patty, it is um, frog tape, so it's sticky side up, and then we've taped it down so that it doesn't move all over the table. Okay, I really don't think this is going to need another coat. I think we're good. Looks great. Let me show you what these look like up close. Do you see the, the soft blend from light to dark down at the bottom? All right, we're going to set all these over to the side. Now everything is painted. All we have to do is base cut or do our um, wood grain on the background. Just stack all this up and switch this over here. So at the beginning of the video, if you're just now logging in, we base coated this with two shades it was fawn which is kind of a tan color there's something stuck to the board fawn and sable brown so that created this sort of background color otherwise it was like this before and so i needed it to be just a little darker because the color that we're going to use for our wood grain is called dark chocolate so i think what i'm going to do i was going to sponge paint this on but i think i need it to be a little thicker so we're just going to do like this and use a large brush, large flat tip brush, get a little bit of water on it. And we're just gonna cover the entire thing. I was afraid that the sponge might put it on too thin and it would dry too fast because it does dry really fast when you sponge paint. So you can put this on fairly messy because we're gonna be doing the wood grain with it. A little bit more. And this is the color dark chocolate. If it feels like it's drying very quickly or you're not getting it to blend, dip your brush in a little bit of water <clears throat> to spread it around. I want it to stay nice and wet so that we can do the wood grain technique with it. And it doesn't have to be really smooth because the wood grain is going to, you know, mix it all up. All right. I think that's good enough. All right. So <laughs> I've never done this before. So we'll, show, we'll see how easy this is. They show pulling it like so and then rocking it. Oh, look how awesome. <laughs> that was easier than I thought it'd be. Okay. And then they showed wiping it off. So you don't have to get it all off, but just get the excess off so that you're not like transferring it a lot. All right. I'm going to start the wood grain a little higher on this spot and then pull down. That way I don't have the knot in the same spot every time. And then the next one I might put down here. So we're just starting and pulling rock up and then back. This is actually way. Oh, I forgot to wipe it. I told y'all to do that, and then I didn't do it. Whoops. Sandy says, I love Creative Fabrica. <laughs> Pam says, you didn't get her face, Aaliyah. <laughs> the face that I made when I surprised myself. <laughs> it's always fun when I can impress myself. I'm trying not to make it too uniform or perfect. Because wood's not really that way. But I'm super impressed with this, y'all. All right, wipe, I'm going to wipe some of that off so it don't get all over everything, and we'll wash that off later. Still managed to get it on my hands, but... <coughs> okay, now we have to dry this. <laughs> Patty says, doggone it, you and those new tools. <laughs> well, Patty, I've actually had this little tool for like two years and never used it. I kept thinking, that'll come in perfect one day. One day took a long time to get here. 
I think I'm, if I'm being honest with myself, I was a little intimidated by it. I thought it was going to be harder than that. Um, but if you go on YouTube, I want you to go, not YouTube, um, TikTok. If you go on TikTok, search the words wood grain tool. You'll see tons of videos of people using this thing in different ways with different colors. Um, and there was a video on there that I was inspired by, by Hammond's Nest. I follow her here on Facebook and she used it over like an MDF background or just like a regular wood background with white. And it created this really cool whitewashed wood look. It was really neat. Donna said, I've seen furniture users, use, furniture painters use it, but hadn't thought about it for a door hanger. There's lots of people who use these on door hangers. I've just been a little scared to do it till today. And then I was like, all right, today we're getting over our fear and we're going to do it. And y'all may be seeing me use this more often now. The color contrast between the two was is a little bit more bold than what I was intending intending to go for. Um, I think it's still going to be okay, but we'll see. Because I was kind of trying to go with a little bit more of a subtlety between the two browns. So in hindsight, I probably could have just used sable brown and dark chocolate, and it would have been fine. I probably didn't need to blend in the fawn. So when you're doing this. If you want there to be less of a contrast in the wood grain, don't use the fawn. I agree with the fawn. This would have been great with the cows. With what? With the cows. Oh, yeah. This would have been great. A great technique to do with the Lola cows. Is that what you're talking about? Mm -hmm. I might have done it in the whitewash, though, or with a, like a turquoise. That might be really pretty because mm -hmm. the brown with the brown cow might be too much. You like that look you need to get this tool it's linked in my amazon favorites so go and use my amazon affiliate link it's linked in tiktok here um i don't think i have it on facebook but uh, the video description but i can put it here there you go there's my amazon link brandy said it's actually something they did a long time ago when wood grain was expensive to build your home hmm. learn something new every day this is almost dry and to me, it looks more red on camera than it does in person. So in just a moment, I'm going to hold it up so you guys can really see what it looks like. Okay, I think that's dry enough. All right, so here's what it looks like in person. It doesn't look quite as red as it looks in the overhead camera. <clears throat> All right, so let's position our daisies and things. Um, there is a difference in the sets of daisies. This one, it has less daisies and has a bigger daisy. This is going at the bottom, and it's not centered like this. It's actually off to the side just a little. And then this one kind of goes up the other way. And then there's a random one just kind of floating right here. And so then kind of lay your words on here and figure out, how you want your words and I'm also kind of like do I want the wood grain going this way mm -hmm. or do I want the wood grain going this way so y'all tell me horizontal or vertical we'll do another happy mail what do you prefer horizontal or vertical layout with the wood grain there's the horizontal I haven't put all the other elements on here yet but just try to envision it Lisa said, I have one of those tools from about 20 years ago. I guess I need to drag that booger out again. <laughs> you do. Okay. I'm seeing mixed reviews, lots of horizontals and verticals. <laughs> TikTok, I see one vertical, two horizontals. What do you feel like, Aaliyah? For some reason, I kind of like the horizontal, but I don't know why. Well, it depends on the color and the knot. You know, there's a light spot. Here. Yeah, that's true. So let's see what it looks like with the hello. See if that helps visualize anymore. I like that. I kind of like that. Yeah, I feel like it kind of flows across there behind it really nicely. Okay, we'll go with horizontal and we're going to pick a happy mail winner. So even if you didn't give your opinion yet, drop it in there and we'll pick somebody real quick. <clears throat> and then the next part is to glue everything down. Oh, and I forgot to do this before we start gluing anything. I got to lay this on here and make sure I have all the positioning right before I glue anything. Our happy mail winner is Emily Hunter. Congratulations, Emily. Send us your mailing address and we will send you some happy mail. Okay, 
So before we start gluing anything, we need to make sure we have plenty of room for our lettering. And I'm actually gonna stand up so I can get a little bit more over this. <laughs> and I'm gonna use my little footstool to look down over it because sometimes it's hard when you're sitting at an angle to it. So let's see. Is that a footstool an official tool? Yeah, footstool is an official craft room tool. You gotta have it. All right, this little flower right here is just to kind of fill this awkward space behind the S. So that's why it goes there. So you don't want to have your flowers too high up here. You see, or they'll be in the word, way of your word. So kind of position it just about like that. And then I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to leave these here. I thought I was going to pick them up and move them. But I think as long as this looks straight, we're good. And I will glue this down first. So this glue that I'm using is called, <laughs> hold on, I got to look at the name of it. It's called Power Flex Gel. And it's by a new company called a new company to me called Super Tight. I found out about them at Namta Creativation. <laughs> oh no, somebody said I rest up really bad one time by gluing it and then saw that it was crooked. Yikes. Um, this is like a super glue that goes on a little bit gel like so you can get, you know, really good placement and stuff. And then you can kind of push it down to secure it and it dries super quick. So I'm just doing little dots all around. to get good coverage and they have different ones so if you don't like a gel super glue you can actually get more liquidy ones and stuff like that but it depends on the strength of the bond that you need and what you're going to choose but this allows you the gel like allows you to be super precise which you don't have to be precise for the back of these daisies but you will want to be precise when you're doing the lettering okay I was kind of getting the excess off there before I stand it up to the side here so I did link the super tight glue for you guys on Amazon if you need some the glue that we we're using before has become kind of hard to get you can't find it on Amazon like you used to be able to and it's gotten crazy expensive you love the laser cut pieces oh I do too Angie okay so we just laid that down let's do this little daisy here Kind of position it right there and then we'll do this area up here just doing dots of it all over it's always better to use less than you think you need because you don't want it squishing out the sides and making a mess so don't be too generous with it. This stuff has a really strong hold. You're not going to need a ton of it. Okay. Make sure no more is coming out. We're going to lay our daisies up here. Make sure you've got your placement right before you push it down because it does have a quick grab. Is that tube hard to squeeze? Um, it's like a metal tube. I wouldn't say it's hard to squeeze, no. Um, and then let's do the word summer. I was squeezing it kind of right in the middle of it though. So I need to kind of squeeze the tip up here. That way I don't have like big air pockets inside the bottle. Again, don't go too generous with the glue on this part. Do like tiny little dots because you don't want it squishing out around your letter. My hands are shaking. You see that? I haven't eaten yet today. I was fasting and my hands are shaking. <laughs> okay. And then I practically had a Red Bull on top of it, yeah. All right, so laying this down again, I'm going to get above it so I can get it straight. Looks pretty good. Push down. Now we can do our letters. So you will have to be a little careful. If you need to, draw yourself like a little line with chalk or something like that if you need to get it nice and straight. 
I am definitely not a perfectionist, so I'm going with the eyeball method. But it does help to kind of get a little higher up when I'm eyeballing it. Need that to line hello up with? Nah. Okay. Well, Leah was offering me a ruler. A lot of you guys would probably use a ruler, but I'm definitely not a precise person. Looks good. I'm so pleased with this accidental ombre we did on these letters. So cute. Last one, the O. Jill says she missed out from the beginning. Can we order this from you? Yeah, you can get the wood cutouts for this um, at shopdoorhangers.com. I've linked it up in the video description. You get the 18, I don't know why I'm putting the lid on. We haven't, <laughs> we haven't finished our daisies. Um, you can get the 18 inch wood round and all of these pieces for $32. Okay, so these bigger circles go in the bigger daisies. So just kind of lay them all out first before you start gluing anything down. Lay all your little circles on first. Lots of little circles. There we go. So now we got to look how cute that is. It's so happy. So happy and sunny. <sighs> uh, I don't trust hot glue on my door hangers um, because it, if they are in the sun a lot, being on the front door, they, the hot glue like gets hot again and then it melts and they fall off. So I don't use the hot glue, but I have used E6000 and E6000 works great, but it doesn't dry fast enough for me. So that's why I liked this glue. It dries really quick and it's got a nice tight bond and it grabs quickly. Doing a tiny amount on the back of these little bitty ones. It does allow, it doesn't, it does grab quick, but not so quick that if you like placed it in the wrong spot, you couldn't move it. So I can kind of like lay it down and slide it over a little bit and then push down. And it dries clear. So if you do have a little bit seep out from underneath, um, you won't be able to see it. It'll be clear. Especially when you go to seal your door hanger. Um, you know, it'll be shiny and you won't notice a little bit of glue. Link to the glue is in your video description. Yeah, I linked the glue on Amazon in the video description. I also added it to the Amazon favorites. So if you're watching on TikTok, just go to craft supplies in my Amazon favorites and it's there. It's super tight is the brand. And I've probably only used like a fourth of this little bottle. I've, it goes a long way. You're welcome, Jill. Hey, Margaret. I'm glad you're here. She said she's new to our page. You're careful. If you hang out here long enough, you'll become addicted to door hanger painting. That's okay. It's a, it's a, a habit and a hobby that's actually good for you. It's very stress relieving. It can actually help you make money if you end up selling your pieces that you make. Lots of ladies love it. We actually have a painting membership also called the Painters Clubhouse. So if you become fully addicted to it, you can come join our club. <laughs> Margaret, the glue that I was using this whole time is called Super Tight. It is a Power Flex glue gel. I added it to my Amazon favorites for you guys. And it dries so quickly that I'm going to pick this up and show it to y'all. So like I said, you can get the file for this on Creative Fabrica's website. Look how fun that is. Creative Fabrica's website. Um, or you can get the wood blank for it in our shop and it comes with the wood round and all of these little pieces that you're going to need to make this project. 
Um, don't forget to also on Amazon, grab the little wood grain tool. It's linked in the craft favorites. Um, and let's see, Leticia says it's pretty. Thank you. Uh, Deb, these came from Pear Eyewear. So I will put the Pear Eyewear link if you want, if you're interested in the glasses. Um, today I'm wearing like a pink and fuchsia and teal like tie-dye looking topper. So they're fun. Okay, Risa's got a question. She said, does the painting retreat in Destin include the hotel or just the workshop? Um, it's just the workshops and your, um, your lunch every day. So you would need to use the booking link inside the Facebook group for booking your hotel room um, using our group room rate. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this project today. If you missed it from the beginning, especially those of you on TikTok, you can watch the entire video of this again from a better angle even on YouTube or Facebook. It'll be on there um, as soon as we're done here and you can restart it from the beginning. But go grab the wood blank in our shop or sign up for Creative Fabrica if you have the ability to cut your own blanks and get the file for free. See you guys later. Bye, y'all.